hi howdy and hello before this video begins i just want to apologize for a couple of things the first being the background noise my window was busted so i can't exactly open it so i have a fan that's constantly running in the background to keep my room cool because it gets really really hot regardless of what time of year it is and secondly i want to apologize if i sound like i ramble on a little bit too much i don't script my videos solely because i speak a lot faster than i can read so if I write something down, I will basically read it really incorrectly and I don't want to take a hundred takes of this video. And thirdly, this video will probably take about a hundred takes solely because I tend to lose my train of thought very, very quickly. It's really hard to keep up with sentences when I'm thinking basically on the fly. And now with those three things out of the way, I just want to preface this video by saying I've been a huge fan of this person's content since I was in high school. I discovered them during my sophomore year, and I'm actually quite close to them in age. I'm about two months and a week younger than them, which I found actually quite surprising. But regardless of that, I've been a fan of their content for roughly seven years now, and seeing how far they've come since... I discovered them, I really wanted to cover this. So in case you weren't familiar with who this is, I am talking about SMG4, or if you want to go by his animation channel that he owns with his brother, Glitch. They recently released a series for their character, Miggy Splitzer, and it is called Sunset Paradise, and I will be reviewing the pilot episode in this video, albeit a month late. Though you're probably wondering, Lena, why would you cover a video almost a month late? Quite a few reasons, actually. This year is the 10 year anniversary of SMG Boris content. He started back in 2011, and very soon will be releasing a movie on his main channel. The other reason is I basically didn't get to do this video as soon as I would have liked to. I've had a lot of stuff happen in IRL that I just couldn't really have the time or motivation to work on a video like this which is why I'm basically making it a month late and for that I am sorry. Now I'm going to be truthfully honest here and say I have never made a video this complex before. I'm going to try and split things up into segments so I apologize if the editing is not that great. I have not done editing since I was in high school so I'm very very bad at it right now. Other than that I hope you enjoy the video and let us begin. Now, what is Sunset Paradise? Sunset Paradise is the show about Maggie Splitzer trying to find a purpose in life now that she has completed Splatfest, which is her life goal. Up until about this point in time, Splatfest had really been Maggie's only purpose in life and really the only thing she had been working hard towards. So she ended up falling into a deep depression, not being able to figure out what to do with her life now that she had completed what she wanted to do. Her friends were able to pick up on the fact that she was having a rough time and decided to help her go on a vacation to help her clear her mind and figure things out. And that is where Sunset Paradise begins. We find Maggie on a boat, which is bound for the glorious island, Port Aurora, which is the setting for the series where Maggie is taking her vacation and fighting her inner demon, Shadow Maggie, which is a representation of all the negativity she's been feeling in her life up until this point in time. There on the island, she meets the deputy, Bori Bori, who is the current sheriff, after his late grandfather. The pair first meet when Maggie is trying to buy an ice cream from an ice cream vendor, only for Ori to show up and interrogate said vendor for his illegal practices. Maggie, annoyed at the fact that Ori ruined her chances of getting her ice cream and her money back, decides to go explore the island to cool off. Along the way, she gets herself a brand new shirt, gets attacked by a very angry monkey with a knife, catches a fish only for it to get eaten by a shark, and then proceeding to jump into the water after the shark right afterwards to go beat it up and claim her fish back. She then finally gets an ice cream, only for the vendor from before to come up and slap it out of her hand. Like the biggest douchebag on planet Earth. She then goes to a shooting range game, only to win every single prize after utterly decimating the booth with her guns. 
With her day now looking better and the sun starting to set, Maggie finds herself passing by an ice cream shop, only to discover that it's being attacked by none other than the Spud Buds, members of the crime syndicate on board Aurora. She debates going to help, but only for the crab carrying her luggage to flat out say no, thus prompting her to not step in during the situation. However, Ori goes in and tries to stop them, only to get beaten up. One of the Spud Buds then proceeds to throw an ice cream at Maggie and it hits her shirt, causing her to become instantly angry and then go in and fight them to defend not only Ori, but whoever else was inside. The duo eventually beat the Spud Buds, but not before they ended up stealing Maggie's suitcase and her being locked out of the hotel for the night because she did not make it in time for her reservation. As a thank you for her help, Ori offers to let Maggie spend the night at his grandfather's place, only for Maggie to find out later on that his grandfather had passed away and is just an urn now. Ori then mentions that his purpose is to protect the island, especially with the upcoming Phoenix Festival. However, it has become harder and harder with the recent influx of crime on the island. Ori then essentially forces Maggie to become his partner, and the episode ends with a scene between the Spud Buds and their boss who tells them that they must kill Ori or they must never come back. And the episode ends there with the rest of the season to drop later this year. this next segment, rather than giving a general synopsis of each character, I will more so be talking about my personal opinions about them. Starting with Maggie. I personally have been around since Maggie's conception, if that's how we're gonna put this. Maggie started off as an inkling who later became a human. Over the years, Maggie has grown to be her own person, rather than just a basic one-off character that's based off of a Nintendo character. Maggie has proven time and time again that she's a capable, strong, independent person who has many talents that tend to go unnoticed, but unfortunately these skills do not apply for real jobs or anything in the modern world, which ended up hindering her in actually finding a new path for herself in life. I personally believe that Maggie has a lot of potential that can be tapped into during this series, and I'm very excited to see where they take it, solely because the Shadow Maggie thing is a symbolic battle of depression, and as someone with depression myself, it is nice to see some sort of representation in modern media when most modern media shows handle the concept of depression very poorly. So I personally take this show as Maggie's battle with depression and finding a future for herself, which is a concept that a lot of people can relate to because growing up is hard and trying to find your place in life is hard. And when you have stuff like depression, it's even harder because you don't really know what you want to do with yourself and you feel like that you don't have the potential to do it. So I have very high hopes for Maggie and her future. I wish her the best of luck in this series and I will be following it wholeheartedly like I have for every other thing that SMG4 has made over the past seven years that I've been a fan of his content. And now we're going to move on to Ori and I have a lot to say about Ori. Or, so I hope Ori is kind of questionable in my eyes. Like, there is a lot about his physics that just kind of don't make sense to me. I still, to this day, have made a big joke about the fact that when he's holding a gun, it's questionable how he can even hold it in the first place, considering he doesn't have fingers. I actually ended up making that picture in my desktop paper because I find it very hilarious. But... Ori as a concept just doesn't grasp me very well because he doesn't have hands. And I don't want to make assumptions or anything, but Ori comes off kind of autistic to me. Not in like a bad way, but in a, is he, but is he not? I mean, he has some quirks that make it seem like that, but I can also understand that maybe he's just a strange kid who doesn't know how to interact with other people, and there could always be that. But for me, Ori just kind of feels autistic. And I personally kind of 
enjoy that. Like, you don't get to see many autistic characters in media, and as someone who's on the spectrum myself, I find representation very, very good when autism is very poorly represented in media. And if the closest thing to positive autism representation I've seen in like the past five fucking years is a talking blueberry character that may or may not be autistic, even if he's not, that's totally fine. But in my eyes, I think I I personally see him as autistic, but if that's the closest thing to the best autistic representation I've seen in five years, I'll gonna take it. I love Ori, I will treasure him. Physics questionable, very much so. But other than that, I love Ori to death. And I will die on that hill, thank you. I really thought I had more to say on Ori, but I mainly am just here to say that I love Ori, and I will fucking play anyone who says otherwise. Ori is a great character. The best representation I've seen in years, even if he's not autistic, he perfectly radiates what I feel like as an autistic person, and I love him. But on, other than that, I'm gonna move on to my final thoughts, because otherwise I'm gonna spend way too long rambling, and I'm very, very sorry. So what are my final thoughts on the pilot of this series? I personally think that this show has a lot of potential even after just one episode. There's a lot that can be worked with from the ground up, and they already seem to have a lot of interesting concepts to start with. There's the cat burglar, there's the spud buds, the mysterious boss. There's a lot to work with here, and I'm very excited to see where it goes. And much like Meta Runner, which I have been following since it started, I believe that it could be just as good, maybe even better, I'm not 100% sure, but this show has the potential to be good and I expect nothing less of Luke and Kevin because they have made so much good content in the last several years that I am thoroughly impressed with how far they've come and I wish them all the best and all the support and I'll be supporting them for years to come. I would more so like to personally end this video as a thank you letter to Luke himself for providing me so many years of good memories with this content. I managed to get through a lot of rough times in my life by watching his videos because they made me laugh, they made me happy. I, I had a lot going on and just seeing him come so far gave me hope that maybe I can be as good as him someday. Probably not on the same level as him, but at least to some extent. Luke has basically been a motivation for me since I was in high school. I want to be a creator like him, and that maybe I can have some sort of influence on the world like he has. He has been a very good influence on not just me, but a lot of the people in his fan base, and I admire him for that. And I aspire to be like him when I have a chance. So. Luke, I, don't, I doubt you'd ever see this, but I just want to say thank you for all the memories you've given me. And I wish you all the luck in your career, and I hope your career only goes even further up from here, because you've worked hard for it, you deserve it, most of all you've definitely earned it. You have a wonderful brother at your side and a loving crew, and I really, really want to see you succeed. I mean, I know you're already famous now, but I I think you're truly amazing, and I'm probably gonna stop here before I ramble on for way too long. I'm sorry. But at the end of the day, this series is good. I really want it to succeed. I might sound uncertain right now, but that's only because I'm actually getting emotional. This this series means a lot to me, much like Meta Runner does. And I really want it to succeed to the same extent as Meta Runner, so I hope you all give it a chance. It is really good, and I think you'll all enjoy it as much as I have. And if not, that's perfectly fine, but, but I personally believe that Sunset Paradise is just as good as Meta Runner and has the potential to be on the same level as it. And I hope that it becomes as successful as I'm hoping it will be.
And with that, I will leave you all here before I get way too emotional. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I hope you all have a lovely day. And if you take anything away from this video, please don't ever give up on yourself. You all have potential, and I don't want you to ever think that you don't. Have a wonderful day, my dears.